For the molarity and titration lab, the supply setup you'll need is a volumetric flask, a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. You will need two beakers, one for the waste and one for the actual titration. Um, for the actual titration, it probably doesn't have to be any bigger than a 100 milliliter flask. You'll need a weigh boat in which to collect the sodium hydroxide, a funnel, and a wash bottle and the wash bottle will be filled with distilled water. And then you'll have a ring stand with a burette clamp, and here's the burette. The funnel would end up being placed at the very top. Okay, and you're not gonna drop it right straight down and you're gonna hold it when you put the sodium hydroxide in. When massing out your sodium hydroxide, you'll take your weigh boat, set it onto the scale, and then hit the tear button to zero it out. Once it's zeroed, then you can add the amount of sodium hydroxide that you calculated you would need. Once you've filled your volumetric flask about halfway with water, then you can take it and you want to swirl it so that all of the sodium hydroxide dissolves into the water. Once it has been dissolved, then you will uh, fill it the rest of the way. You might add a little bit of water here until it gets up to about the neck and then you're going to want to use your wash bottle to fill it the rest of the way up to the line. Now I'm at the stage where I need to rinse the burette. You'll notice that I've brought the ring stand to the edge of the lab table uh, and that way I can raise it and lower it and see when I need to fill it, I can see to the zero mark right there. Um, I have the funnel right here <clears throat> because what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of my base in there, a few milliliters, so I pour a few milliliters in and that comes down. I remove the funnel and then I carefully take the burette out. And when I take it out now to rinse it, I'm going to put it on its side and gently roll it. And you see I have my waste beaker here. I'm going to gently roll it so that I can um, remove any water or contaminants that are on the inside of the burette. We don't want them to affect our final molarity, our final calculations. So um, I roll it and then I pour out the excess into the waste beaker. And I'm going to do that three times. Now I have carefully filled up, I've used the funnel, you could probably do this with two people, filled up my burette <clears throat> with the sodium hydroxide from my volumetric flask. And I want it to be at least at the zero mark. Now <clears throat> you can go a little bit above, it's okay because we're going to flush out the tip uh, and remove any air bubbles or air pockets from the tip of our burette. So I filled it up, I take the funnel off, okay, and now I'm going to raise it uh, up a little bit, bring it back over the bench, and now I want to let a little bit of my base out. And so I turn the stopcock and it flushes a little bit out, and now I don't have any air bubbles inside the tip. The uh, burette is calibrated to contain exactly 50.0. If there's air bubbles here, then that air will be used in the calculations of volume and we don't want that. Now I have a starting uh, volume and it doesn't have to be, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't have to be exactly at 0, 0.00. So what I can do is I can lower this down a little bit and I can see it looks to me that uh, when I look at the burette, it's about at and I need to go to the hundredths place for the, uh, the place of uncertainty. I would say that it's at 0.31 milliliters. And so I'm going to write 0.31 as my initial volume uh, in my data table. Now we're going to add some acid to our beaker. You'll notice that we keep the pipette inside this pipette sleeve when not in use. The floor or the counter of this pipe, of this hood is a, a little bit dirty, it needs to be cleaned. Anyways, um, so we're keeping it inside the sleeve right now. So you pull it out of the sleeve, okay, and then you have your pipette and you have the pipette pump and you're going to carefully drop it down into the volumetric flask of the acid. Now, you're going to roll the um, this wheel towards you in order to suck up the fluid and then you're going to pull this trigger, pull that pull that trigger right there to dispense it into your beaker. So if I drop it down into this and I'm going to pull it 
right up to the 10 mark on here. Uh, one side says 10, one side says 0. We want the 10 side, obviously. So, and you want the bottom of the meniscus, you would need to get right down at eye level, and you want uh, the bottom of the meniscus to, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't have it, the bottom of the meniscus to be right at the 10. So I pull it up until I get it right at the bottom of the 10. So I'm going to roll just a little bit down, and I'm at the 10 mark, and then I'm going to pull the trigger and dispense that into my beaker. Then I can place the pipette back into the sleeve and it'll be ready for the next person. After you've added the acid to your beaker, you're going to need to add one drop of the phenolphthalein. You'll notice that the phenolphthalein is in a stoppered flask because it will readily evaporate. And we have a little um, barrel pipette or a pasteur pipette plastic that, that's the dropper. So it is also in its um, paper holders. Now, when you begin the titration, you may notice that I have a white piece of paper underneath the beaker containing the acid because um, when it does turn pink, I want it to become very obvious, so I would suggest you do that. Here is the stopcock, and uh, I know that it's going to take a little bit of base, so what I can do is I can start off kind of slowly, and I am turning it ever so slightly and allowing a little bit to go in. Now, while I'm doing that, a second person should be swirling it. Okay. Now I noticed that as I was adding it in the stream, it turned pink pretty quick. So now I need to be very careful about how I add it. And so I'm going to add it drop by drop. There's two ways to get drop by drop. You can ease it up very slowly, very carefully until you see the drop start to form. And then you allow the drop to, to, to touch the side of the beaker. And then you take a little bit of water and you flush it down and then you swirl. That's the first technique. The second technique is to actually take the stopcock and turn it one full turn quickly. So while holding onto the burette, I advance it very quickly like that. And then I swirl and see what happens. I prefer the second technique where it's a quick half turn and to see what happens, uh, but either way is fine. And the adding of the water, because it doesn't actually change the moles of acid, it doesn't affect your calculations. Remember that in a neutralization reaction, titration, it's all about the moles. Moles of acid neutralized by moles of base. So if you add a little bit of water, it does not affect the number of moles. Now I have finished my titration um, and the pink has been persistent for at least 20 seconds. And you can see the color of that pink and it's not too dark, that's just about right. Shazam! Once you're finished with the lab, uh, because the concentrations are so low and the volumes are also so low, we can flush uh, these down the sink with excess water. So I'm going to turn on the water. This is, I'm just going to squeeze the tip there to get a regular flow. And then now that the water's flowing, that I can dump this out, rinse it out a little bit. And uh, you don't want to rinse out. That's the waste beaker. Not a big deal. Here's the acid. Rinse that out. And then the base. Also, you're going to want to rinse this out. And uh, once you've rinsed them out, then you're going to want to take a test tube brush, put just a little bit of soap on the end of that, and then you're going to want to uh, add some water, and we need you to uh, try to, to squeeze out a little bit and clean it. It's hard to do with the, um, it's hard to do with these volumetric flasks, but much easier to do with the beakers. With soap and water, and then make sure you've rinsed off all of the soap. And then you're going to return it to your lab station, uh, so it'll be ready for the next lab group. For the burette, again, the water is flowing. Uh, you can also pour it down the sink with excess water. Uh, and once, it's easier just to pour it out than to let it drain out the bottom. But then you're going to add a little bit of water to the top. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I'm adding a little bit of water with the wash bottle. And then so you add, you can rinse out the inside a little bit. And then now you can let it flow out the bottom so it rinses through the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> that way that there's um, less chance of contamination of the next group. When I say contamination, I mean you're affecting the concentrations. You might be making your solutions differently. 